it's monday all right we're back it's another monday um i'm on the stairs so you know it's about to get deep <laughs> um i wanted to talk to you guys today about body hate um and just uh share with you a book that really brought it home for me like i've always kind of had this relationship with my body where i've always loved myself but i've had issues with the way that i've looked over the years um whether i've you know been too big or you know not fit enough not strong enough um doubted myself as a personal trainer because i didn't look completely ripped and lean and and all of that stuff um so i wanted to share some of the some chapters in this book and honestly I don't have time to sit down and read, but I got Audible and I'm telling you now, earbuds in. I did this book in one day, so no excuses, people. Um, but yeah, let me just, it's called, let me take where it's called. It's called intelligent wait. and amazing. You shush. <laughs> it's called If Your Body Could Talk, okay? And it's by Jackie Sharples. And, um, Basically, it's letters from your body to you. Um, and some of them are a bit harsh, I'm not going to lie. Like, you listen to it and you're like, oh, that is so me. But it's one of those things that I feel like we need to hear sometimes. And it's different when it comes from somebody else. But when you can imagine it coming from your own body, it, made you, it makes you just be like, shit. Yeah, I need to... I need to fix up. Um, so I wanted to share it with you guys and share some of my uh, favorite chapters and um, discuss. Many intelligent and amazing people. And is there is one thing in particular that I've seen and heard too many times. Some be plenty of questions. Over the years, I've come across so many intelligent and amazing people and there is one thing in particular that I've seen and heard too many times. Some people say it through their actions. Some show it by the condition their body's in. Some think it to themselves and some just come right out and say it out loud. However they choose to express it, it still amazes and saddens me. It's the expression, the action, the words, I hate my body. When I see or hear that sentence, it makes me wonder how you can hate the one thing that makes it possible for you to do everything that you do. When I see someone who hates their body through their actions and their words, I can't help but think, what must this person's body think of them in return? Mm -hmm. I found myself asking the question, if our body had a choice about who owned it, would it choose who it's with now? Or would it find a new partner? If your body could leave you at any moment, would you be nicer to it? I can't help but think, if we were a little nicer to our bodies, we would all be healthier and happier. Health and happiness. Two things everyone seems to be in a constant search for. Always. At times, it feels like we live in a world that is hell-bent on making us focus on whether or not we like the look of bodies mm. and then drives us to spend countless hours trying to change. But if that's not making us healthier and happier, maybe it's time to ask some new questions. That's kind of like the intro, okay? So it talks about how much, obviously, we hate our bodies and, you know, people are just so vocal. Um, I've met women before who have PT'd or come to my boot camps or even just general conversation and even with my friends and it, you know you can get into a deep conversation of everything that you hate about your bodies and I've spoken about this before um, you know and I, I challenged people to you know give me three things you love about 
yourself or your body and some people can't even give me one and it's heartbreaking um to to know that you know people people are out there and they and they feel and think like this and me as a personal trainer it's like how can i help because i can get you to be fitter i can get you to be stronger i can get you to lose a couple pounds but if you're not happy with you no matter how much weight you lose you are forever going to be chasing something and you're never going to be happy um and i started to try to do some of the work on building that building that love for oneself uh with my clients like we have sometimes we talk in our sessions um and it's not always about the exercise like i can give you exercises to do and be like go and do it that's your homework but today we're going to have a conversation we're going to talk about what you need mentally to love yourself so that when you start seeing the changes you appreciate it and you you feel good in your body and you feel good in your own skin do you know what i mean um there's another one that i want to play hold on to all of you beautiful ladies mm. whom this should concern they said i hear the things you think about me i hear the things you say about me a little while ago you told someone that you didn't like me that if you had the choice, you'd change almost every part of me. And you said it right in front of me too, as if I couldn't hear you, as if you didn't even care about my feelings. I wasn't the only one. You and your friends sat around together, complaining about all of us, pointing out what you dislike, squeezing the areas you loathed, That's and lamenting worst. over the things you hated. I could sense the others felt the same way I did. A little angry, a little sad and ready to give up trying. The most ridiculous part of it all is that we only look and feel the way we do because of the choices you make. We've been trying to communicate with you all to tell you what we need, but you don't listen. I just feel so hurt and frustrated. I thought maybe there are some things you don't know about me and that if you did know, we could both be happier. I always try to say to people, think of your body like your best friend. And, you know, I even say, use me, okay? I want you to look at me and just, as as your trainer or as your friend or your mom or your sister, whoever, look at that person who you like and you admire and tell them all their faults. Go for it. Tell them. Tell them everything that's wrong with them, everything that's wrong with their body, everything that, you know, you don't like the look of. And you wouldn't, like, you just wouldn't do that to somebody that you love and care for. Maybe someone you don't like, you might you might be like, yeah, I rip you to shit. <laughs> but, I mean, you shouldn't do that either, people, okay? So, cyberbullying is bad. Um, but you couldn't do that to someone that you love and someone that you respect or someone that you like. You wouldn't be like, mm, you know, I hate your arms, I hate your stomach. Um, and you wouldn't go up to them and grab, do you know, but we're so comfortable doing it to ourselves. So comfortable. And to tell other people that as well, you know? And to to to, to stand in the mirror and, and, and point at things and, and... It's just, you're already putting yourself down. Now, how are you gonna get out of the situation? How are you going to feel better? maybe by self-praise you know instead of putting yourself down all the time maybe give yourself a boost and that will give you the energy to do the things you want to do to lose those couple of pounds to get a little bit fitter but if we're constantly knocking ourselves down you're making it 10 times harder for yourself to get up honestly it starts with love it starts with appreciation for yourself the fact that I want to train, work out and eat well to better myself. That's where it comes from, not from hate, not from, oh, I hate this and I don't like this and that's what, and this needs to go. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do three hours on a cross trainer or I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go out and run 
and and not going to eat for the whole day and, and that is just torture that's not progression that's not going to help you get to where you want to be it starts with love there's another one i want to share with you okay this is not me i'm not getting any money from the book okay i just <laughs> i just want to share it with you because i think it's brilliant um let me see what this one is hold on yes. dear Gemma, you are a star You've achieved some great things so far in your life. You've learned a lot, made great improvements in your life, set goals, and exceeded them. A few weeks ago, you set the goal to lose 12 pounds. Each day, you've been jumping on those bathroom scales and weighing in. Today, you had gained half a pound, despite doing everything right. You got so down. You threw in the towel for the day. You ate badly all day and couldn't be bothered working out. Seriously. You said to someone at work, there's no point trying. My body is obviously meant to be fat. I don't get it. In everything you've achieved in your life so far, you have never got from A to B in a smooth and straight path. Nope. You've U-turned, gone sideways, reversed, sped forward, crawled backwards, shot up and plummeted down. You've put in time and effort and results have followed, but not usually immediately or predictably. Mm -hmm. So why, when it comes to weight loss, do you expect to see the numbers steadily decrease, perfectly aligned with time and effort? If you're expecting to see a smooth progression, you're setting yourself up to be disappointed and frustrated, no matter what change or improvement you're looking for in life. So true. You getting upset today was not because the number you saw on the scales was too high. It was that your expectations were not quite right. People do this all the time. I'm going to lose this. I'm going to do that. It's usually New Year's resolutions. Um, and they have no plan. No plan. Just going to start eating salads and I'm just going to start, you know, running. I'm going to do all the hit classes. Um, I might do one weights class and that's it. Like, I'm just, I'm going for it. Two weeks in, jump on the scales. Either your weight's gone up or it's plateaued, you stayed the same. Ugh, I give up. It's just not meant for me. My body's just not supposed to change. I'm done. But everything else in your life, you plan. You want to buy a house. You put a plan together. This is how much deposit I need. What area do I want to... There's plans for everything else. I want, you know, to progress in my career. What do I need to do to get there? There's steps. But when it comes to your body, you want it instant. You want it straight away. There's no goal. Well, there is a goal, but there's no plan to get there. And the expectation is always up here, you know? And instead of breaking it down and being like, okay, how am I going to do this? This is, this is a year long goal. And I'm not going to look at it for 12 months. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it down. You know, I'm going to break it down into three months and then I'm going to break it down even further into weekly goals. And instead of focusing on the actual result, you need to focus on the action. So if I say, like, say I want to lose weight, OK, instead of saying I want to lose two pounds a week, that's my goal. That's what I'm going to do. And every week I jump on the scale, boom, and I haven't done it. Instead of doing that. Why not try? Okay, I'm going to drink two litres of water a day. I'm going to try and make sure my I get my steps in at least 10,000 a day. I'm going to try and work out for at least half an hour every day. I'm going to look at my calories and make sure I'm in a calorie deficit every day. That's how you get your goal. That's how you get that result. It's by doing. You've got to focus on the doing and it's daily. It's daily. It's not, I want it tomorrow and, you know, that's it. It's daily steps. And you might have a, you know, you might fall off and have a bad day. That's fine. You get up, you start again the next day. You get back on it. You don't give up. We don't stop. If that's your goal and you really want it, you have to keep going. Okay? There's one more I want to play. I know this video is long. But listen to this one. Dear Tori. Did you hear me at all tonight? At dinner, when I was trying to signal to you that we were full? Full. I was practically screaming it. Not that I should be surprised. You never seem to listen to me anymore. 
How do you decide when to stop eating if you don't listen to me? Is it until your plate is empty or until you can't fit any more in me? Did you know that you could actually stop eating before I give you the I'm about to explode signal? No way. When you fill me up meal after meal, it leaves me with so much work to do. It makes me really slow and sluggish. Plus it leaves me with way more food and energy than I ever need. It turns into fat. Maybe it's not your fault that you eat like that. I think you were taught to eat until you were full. Yeah. Tonight at dinner, someone said something to you that I heard your parents say to you at the end of most meals when you were younger. Are you full? You were taught that you should eat until you are full. Yeah. Your parents always wanted you to finish what was on your plate, mm. no matter how much you were given. Sometimes you weren't allowed to leave the table until you licked your plate clean. So... You learn to ignore me pretty early on in your life. I can't really blame you. It's a cultural thing, I guess. Mm. A culture of people who seem to ignore their bodies. The great news is that now that you know I've been trying to communicate with you, this is something you can change without too much effort. No one feeds you anymore. And you're allowed to leave the table whenever you want. You can, you can eat less and not punish me or yourself. It's a win-win situation. So, in order to hear me, there's a few things you need to do. Firstly, if you eat more slowly, I can send you the signal that I don't need any more before I get full. Mm -hmm. I'll let you know when we're not hungry anymore. That is a different feeling to being full or unable to fit anything else in. Did you notice when we were in France last year, and when the French finish eating, they say, Je n'ai plus faim. That translates to, I have no more hunger. No more hunger. I think the French are onto something. Imagine if we asked ourselves, Do I have hunger anymore? Instead of, Am I full? That, oh my gosh. If you've grown up in a household where you were not allowed to leave the table until your plate was full, you probably have that issue. I have to finish what's on the plate. I got to eat it all. <laughs> and then your stomach is just bossing, just like, oh, I just need to sleep. And um, some people say I got the itis. That is a problem, people. <laughs> and actually, when I listened to that, it changed the way that I uh, feed Amira, my daughter, honestly. When she says, uh, you know, I, I say to her, are you still hungry? Instead of, are you full? Are you still hungry? It's a, it's a completely different um, question. And if she says no, even if there's food left, I say, okay, that's fine. You can leave the table. And I started doing it with myself. Um, if I'm not hungry anymore, I stop eating. Put the rest into a container. You can eat it the next day. It's not the end of the world. But too much of us, you know, we put all this food on a plate. And then it's like, we have to, we have to finish it. You don't, <laughs> you do not have to finish it. Like walk away, put it in a container. That was one of the, the biggest, well, one of the main things I took away from this book. But there are so many like little hidden gems in there. And because it's coming from the perspective of your body, it just makes you think of it in a different way like there's a there's one on you know drinking water some people are, oh, i don't like drinking water it talks about i i sent you signals i have a headache and you gave me coffee things like that and like uh things like, oh you don't like water but there's so many other things that you do that you don't like but you need to do like you go to work you may not like it every day but you go to work so why can we not just drink water my body needs water um it's just little things it makes you think of it in a different perspective that it's coming from your body rather than somebody like a personal trainer or your parents telling you you need to do this you need to do that when people tell you you have to do something it makes it like oh you know what i mean but when it's the way it's written it's coming from your body and you need your body for everything so you have to put it first um, you know, your body needs you, your body needs you to love it. Your body needs to, needs you to take care of it. You have to look after your body. And I recommend like anyone who's going through any kind of struggles with body image or, you know, you want to lose weight, you want to get fitter, you want to get stronger, you want to be more healthy. 
um get this book honestly i'm just telling you i did it i think the whole thing is like three hours um long or three and a bit hours but it really helped me to understand my body from a different perspective or from my body's perspective um so that's my monday motivation it's a little bit of a long one um I'm not getting paid any money to promote this book <laughs> um but honestly if you are that person and you find it hard to love yourself and love your body get this book read it if you if you can if you can't get the audible um and just listen to it and just identify with the letters that identify with you in your body and hopefully it will change your life and if it does let me know <laughs> but yeah guys have a great week um Boris is making an announcement tonight. We're coming out of lockdown, maybe in like June, but we're coming out. It's the road ahead. Be positive, be strong, love yourself and happy Monday. Mwah. It's Monday.